Kaylin Chiarello Ebner, editor and associate publisher of Whole Foods Magazine, here to talk with you about a new book that hits stores in October. I'm talking about Indian for Everyone, the Home Cook's Guide to Traditional Favorites, written by Anubi Singla and published by Surrey Books. If you've never tried cooking Indian food before, if you've been doing it for years, this cookbook is truly for everyone. Author Anupi Singla is here with me on the phone and can tell you more about it. Welcome, Anupi. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Her food-related work has appeared in places like the Chicago Tribune, the Wall Street Journal, and elsewhere. But back to her newest adventure, the book Indian for Everyone. Anupi, what inspired you to write this cookbook? Why well, say the morning reporter, the morning face here in Chicago. I was getting up at 1 in the morning wow. at work <laughs> at 3 and then on air at 3. And so it was just so much work and so hard to do and balance family life and, and food for the kids because my husband travels Monday through Friday. He's a consultant. Mm. So it was one of those aha moments where I came back from a really big story in Chicago came back one afternoon and saw that my kids, they were eating boxed foods and um, quick prep foods, and I thought, you know what, as somebody who was born in another country but raised in America, my mother made it work for us in terms of dinner every single night, and I never gave her enough credit, and I realized one of us has to do it. It's either going to be my husband, or it's going to be me, or it's going to be another family member, and the others were not an option, so I just decided to take a step back and start writing and blogging about every Indian recipe I grew up with to see if I could replicate it and get my kids to really love it and learn about their roots through food. And it was an experiment that just seemed to take off. Right. And this book works so well because of the not only the wonderful recipes, but because you do break it down so well. And I think one area where you're so, so successful is talking about the ingredients and the spices. Uh, because that's something that might be daunting to people who have never tried cooking Indian food before. So what do you think are some of those basic spices that a home cook should stock up on? Absolutely. And one of the things I always try to tell folks is I'm one of you. I grew up Indian American outside of Philadelphia back in the 70s and 80s. And my street still, many folks have never even tried chicken curry or really tried Indian food on that street. And so I always use that as a great benchmark for the fact that if I can get them to understand and embrace the taste of India, I can get most folks to at least try it and say, wow, homestyle cooking is much different than what you're getting in restaurants and actually much more healthy and less intimidating. And so some of the key spices, and we lay it out also on my website, so that folks can go on there very quickly and just kind of buy them with one click are going to be things like turmeric, um, cumin seed, coriander powder, mustard seed, gutta masala, and red chili powder. So you can start your Indian cooking and journey with just six basic spices and none of them even included curry powder. So it's mm -hmm. such a misnomer in this country that curry powder is a symbol of Indian food. We don't even use it in, in none of my books do I even use curry powder because we like to use whole spices to create authentic uh, taste um, versus using one powder that limits the way a dish may taste. Wow. I'm really glad you brought that up. That's such a misconception. Um, and you also mentioned garam masala. Can you get into a little bit what that is? And I know there's so many variations from family to family and cook to cook. What goes into making a great one? Absolutely. And so I start with a lot of love. <laughs> so that's the first thing. And the other part of it is I always say if anybody, including myself, tells you that they make the best gutta masala on the planet, don't believe them. Because... It does vary according to household by household in India. And so my recipe is really my grandmother's, hmm. and it includes things like coriander seed, black peppercorn, cloves, cinnamon, some bay leaves, turmeric, cardamom, and, and cumin as well. And the key to getting the right flavoring from some of our masalas, masala just means spice blend. Okay. Gutam just means kind of warm. And so these are earthy, warmer spices that are not only put together and then ground, but before they're ground, they're dry roasted. So whenever you dry roast 
your spices, you pull out essential oils, and that gives them another layer of warmth, another layer of flavor for your dish later. And that's precisely why it's been really important for me to release Indian spice blends here in the U.S. because I believe that many of the ones that you're getting at the stores often are not roasted, dry roasted first. And so I make sure that mine are so that you're getting those authentic sort of flavors. It's not a flat, chalky sort of flavor. You're getting a really deep, aromatic sort of flavor when you're cooking with them. Hmm. That's really interesting, and I love the fact that you incorporated something from your from your own grandmother. That's really wonderful. It's and all about family, right? Absolutely. At the end of the day, that's what cooking should be. That's right. Now, what about some other staples? Um, I'd love to talk with you about some of the vegetables and even, even the beans um, that are prominent in your recipe. So many people come to Indian food because you can make a vegetarian. Can you talk a little about that? I love the fact that... If you want to lean towards being vegetarian or vegan, Indian food doesn't make you feel odd, right? Because for us, the vegetables shine and the meat is a sidebar if you choose to have it. Um, What's interesting is Indian food has two sort of categories of dishes. You've got curries, which has nothing to do with curry powder. It just means gravy. And you have dishes that are really basically stir-fries. So we usually hear stir-fry associated with East Asian cooking, but it's a a similar thing with Indian cooking. So often we'll use things like cauliflower, okra, um, eggplant, even green beans, and we will maybe chop them a certain way or um, just leave them whole with the green beans, and we'll put them in hot oil with a little bit of cumin seed and a little bit of turmeric. Just basically mix them around, add a few more spices, some ginger, garlic, onion, and then some salt, and you're ready to go. You cook it for about three to four minutes, and then you put the heat on low, and you put a lid on it and let it really cook through for about another ten minutes. So those are kind of our go-to ways of making stir fries. So there's so many different vegetables that you can incorporate into your day-to-day. And for us, a meal is just not complete without all the vegetables versus sometimes in other cuisines where it's not complete without the meat. It's really interesting. Nice. And it sounds like you don't need to go to any specialty store for that. It's sneaking it in your local market. You really can. And that's the thing that I really try to talk to folks about when it comes to Indian is that it, it's so accessible if you just absolutely know where to go for certain things and certain ingredients. And these are all basic sorts of ingredients, like the basics for us in terms of you have your main vegetable, but then your add-ons are the tomato, ginger, garlic, and onion, and everyone can access those. It's really less for us about slicing and dicing, and I would say it's more about the spices. So once you get your spice cupboard ready to go, and you have those six essentials and maybe a few more, then you're pretty much ready to make most Indian meals. And as you go, as you get more uh, apt at it and you want to incorporate more seemingly exotic spices, you can do that too. Right. Okay, so the, quote, stir fries that you were talking about seem pretty straightforward. But what about those great Indian breads that everyone loves? How hard is it to make something like a naan? I knew you were going to ask that. I'm glad that you did. So here's what I want to say first, is that most people associate naan with Indian food. But if you really understand Indian cuisine and home cooking, we never grew up eating naan in the household. And I know that surprises a lot of folks because if you think about it, naan is a leavened bread. It has yeast in it, typically yogurt. Uh, It's also made with white flour, and it's made in a tandoor, a clay oven that that gets upwards of 500 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit in heat. And nobody I know has a tandoor oven at home. And so what we make actually is roti. Roti is like a flatbread, like a tortilla. And we just make that out of a specialized flour. It's a stone ground flour called chapati flour. Chapati is another name for roti. And it's stone ground, it's a soft white wheat, it's whole wheat, and we buy that usually at a specialty store, an Indian grocery store, and we just mix that with water. And then we make a dough out of it and roll these things out and cook them on the stovetop. So it takes a little bit of planning, but once I show people how to make a roti, first it's delicious, 
it's less in calories, it's much healthier, and it's not difficult to make at all. You can make them ahead of time and stick them in your fridge. And if you want to make naan, there's a recipe for it in my next book. It's not that complicated to make, but why not make roti on a daily basis and use that naan as your treat? Interesting. I'll, I totally have to try that now, and I'm so glad <laughs> that you've educated us about naan and other misconceptions with Indian cooking. Now, um, my last question for you is about um, some specific recipes. Can you tell us what are some of your family's favorite go-to recipes from the book? What do you love? Well, hands down, my kids absolutely love a dish called rajma. Rajma is our equivalent of red beans and rice, hmm. and it's so simple to make. It's kidney beans with um, just some ginger, garlic, onion, and tomato. And then you put in some spices like cumin seed and uh, garam masala as well as turmeric and a few others. And my favorite way to make rajma is to stick it, stick it in a slow cooker. You just basically put it in there with water and it cooks all day and it's done by the end of the day and it's creamy and it's rich and it's delicious and my mouth is basically watering as I'm talking to you because <laughs> I love food. And so that's one of our favorites. Another favorite would be our... Alu gobi. Alu means potato. Gobi is cauliflower, and that's a stir fry, and that's a great go-to just to eat on a roti or to make some gluten-free flatbreads with, and uh, that's kind of our go-to lunch every once in a while. And a third absolute favorite is not a main dish, but when we grow up in India eating, we always have to have different textures with our food. We always have to have a side salad of onions and cucumber. So one of my kids' absolute favorite is to do that, but then mix it with lemon juice and some black salt, which is a favorite spice of ours. It's a mineral salt that you can buy in specialty Indian specialty stores. A little bit of that with lemon juice and red chili powder and... It basically goes with everything. They eat that with their mac and cheese. They eat it sometimes after a dessert, a bowl of onions and cucumbers, but it just makes fresh vegetables shine. Hmm. That's wonderful. You're making my mouth water, too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That was my job, right? I love your, I love your descriptions of, of healthy Indian cooking. Do you have any suggestions where readers can get even more information, even outside cookbooks, um, about Indian cooking and techniques? Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, and I've done some videos on YouTube as well. Right now, I'm working on pitching a cooking show through public television, and I'm actually starting a Kickstarter campaign to ask folks to help me um, basically get that initial tier of funding down. But um, cooking shows, absolutely on the Internet. There's lots of recipes. You can also go on my website, Indian as Apple Pie. And what I love to do on my blog is put recipes there so that people don't feel like immediately they have to be obligated to buy a book. I want them to come and be an information source. My background is that I'm a reporter, and I feel like I'd rather give you something and have you really like it, use it, and try it, and then come back for more and invest, you know, your time and energy in something that you really believe in. So I always have new and amazing recipes there. You know, obviously I slow down sometimes, and I, I love that people, you know, are, are patient with me. But so those are some of the places that I would go to to get more recipes, to get more information, and just learn more about what spices can do for you health-wise. Fantastic. I've been talking with Anubi Singla, the author of the new book, Indian for Everyone. Anubi, where can we get this book? Where can readers find it? Well, right now you can hop on uh, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, all of these places and pre-order the book. It's officially being released October 14th, and it will be in bookstores like Barnes & Noble. It will also be at certain specialty stores, and um, just if they don't have it, you can ask for it. I also encourage folks to go to their local public library and just ask for it. My other two books did really well in libraries. People would check them out, be convinced, and then buy them. So it's everywhere. Uh, it will eventually be on my website as well. And so uh, just look for it, but Amazon's a great spot for it as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. I appreciate it.